On today's episode of Rowdy Riley's Sports Review, we'll all hear from Daniel Alexander, who played for the Titans as a fullback and linebacker during the 01-02 season. Welcome to the Rowdy Riley Sports Review. My name is Rowdy Riley. Thank you so much for coming on. My pleasure. Glad to be here. I first want to start, Dan, with where did your love of football come from? Did it come from family, or was it just inbuilt in you to love football? No, uh, for me, it was actually, you know, I start, first started loving football uh, when my older brother started playing. So my family, uh, no one in my family history had played football until my older brother did his junior year of high school. Uh, and so his junior year of high school, um, he was in the band, um, in the marching band, and the football coach was like, hey, you like, you're a pretty big band guy. You need to come play some football. And they convinced my brother to come out and play football. And so I loved those two years, junior and senior year, you know, as a kid going to his games, playing, you know, um, you know football on the sidelines, uh, you know, with the other kids while, while cheering on my big brother. Um, and so when he got a football scholarship uh, his senior year to go to college uh, to play football, I said, you know what? I want to go to college too. Uh, and so it wasn't, I think when I first uh, really liked football, it wasn't so much like, oh, I just love this, this is what I want to do the rest of my life. It was more like, I want to go to college because my brother was also the first person in our family history to go to college. Uh, and I said, if, if I want to go to college, my family's pretty poor. We can't pay for college. Uh, so how am I going to get a scholarship to go there? And I said, well, maybe uh, a sport will do that. So I did football, wrestling, and track. Uh, all the way through high school, um, trying to see which one of those would give me a scholarship opportunity to go to go to college. Fast forwarding to college a little bit, what was the culture of Nebraska like when you arrived at, as a freshman? Um, they had a great culture. So you know, truthfully, it's like they were they were at that time the best team in the country. You know, they had won back to back national championships uh, in '94, '95, uh, and so obviously they were the best football school. Um, but for me, coming out of high school, I really wanted to go to a place with a Christian head coach because um, I felt like a Christian head coach would help give the culture that I wanted, that I would help me be successful. And so um, uh, Tom Osborne was one of the guys where I never heard anything bad about Tom Osborne. I heard he was a great, respectable coach, um, that he made great decisions, that he treated his, his players and his coaches fairly. Um, he was great with the fans. He was great for Nebraska. He was a strong Christian man. And so I said, you know, that's the kind of culture I want to be part of. Um, and so it didn't hurt, obviously, that they were the best football school in the country at the time, too. Uh, and so when I went on my recruiting trip, what was different was that uh, a lot of recruiting trips that I went to to other colleges, um, they tried to, like, wine and dine you. You know, they want to show you, you know, how much money you can make in your summer jobs and, you know, how good their facilities are that they're going to take care of you or, you know, um, you know, how pretty the girls were on campus, whatever it is, whatever they thought they could try to get you there by saying hey, how great all this stuff is going to be. Uh, what was great about Nebraska is instead of whining and dining me, uh, though they did a little bit of that too, um, is one of the first experiences I had there is I went um, to go feed um, homeless at the homeless shelter on my recruiting trip. Uh, it was one thing they took me to do. And another thing that we did was we went and visited uh, kids that had been badly burned in the burn hospital uh, at, at there in, in Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, and so right from the start on the recruiting trip, I said, this place is different. You know, like they understand me. They understand my, what I want. Um, obviously, that's not the same recruiting trip they're going to do for every player out there. Uh, not that most players want to do that, but they understood me and they understood what I wanted and they were willing to, uh, to listen and to, you know, invite me into the part of their culture that I would be most attracted to. And, um, you know, so that's what really sold me was that recruiting trip. So, uh, who was your favorite teammate at Nebraska during your four years? Uh, during my four years, I'd say my best, uh, my best teammate was Willie Miller. Um, we both came in in the same recruiting, or, uh, recruiting class, and um, you know, we were both came in as fullbacks. So right from the start, we were actually competitors. Um, and so on, you know, trying to compete for the fullback position, um, but we used you know, I think fell in love with each other as far as friends go. Like we, we really enjoyed each other. Uh, and so halfway through our freshman year, um, him and his best friend at the time, that they both grew up in high school together, decided to go off, move off campus and get an apartment and invited me to be their third uh, uh, as far as their roommates. And so me, Willie, and his, his friend Dusty, uh, who became one of my good friends too, 
um, us three uh, became kind of the in inseparable trio uh, and stayed with each other uh, and roomed together um, all four, four and a half years almost of college. Uh, we stayed in the same apartment together and so it really allowed us to bond. Um, another good thing that had to happen for our friendship was uh, that first year, the first bowl game I went to, the Orange Bowl, um, they started having me start doing running back position instead of fullback position. So I started kind of doing scout team running back for the, for the offense, for the, sorry, for the, the starting defense. I would be the scout, uh, the scout team running back. And uh, doing that uh, allowed us to not compete. You know, I didn't have to compete for the fullback position. Uh, I was competing more as a running back at that time, which allowed us to be not only roommates, um, but be work very cooperatively because we were in the same running back meetings, um, but we played uh, a role together that we were cooperative in that role. Um, so yeah, I mean, by far the strongest relationship I had, you know, in college was you know, a guy who was my roommate and somebody I worked with uh, on the field uh, on a regular basis. So, uh, what did Coach Osborne teach you that you then brought up to uh, that you then brought over to Nashville once you got drafted? Tom Osborne, he he taught me a lot of things. Um, you know, um, I think one of the things that he showed, um, I think the world in a lot of in a big degree, was that to be a good football coach, you didn't need to yell and scream at people. <laughs> You didn't need to demean people. Um, you didn't need to, you know, do it by, you know, by strength and threats. Um, I felt like, you know, Osborne was a soft-spoken guy most of the time. Uh, he raised his voice to be heard, um, but you know, his, coach, I never heard cuss. You know, his his biggest cuss word he ever said was Judas Priest. <laughs> when, he, <laughs> when he got when he got really angry, he'd be like Judas Priest. You know, and. Um, and then, and that was it. So you're like, oh gosh, like his cuss word is basically a talking, band, so, you know, yeah, or talking <laughs> bad about the the person who who uh, who uh, who who uh, betrayed Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know, like he was cursing that person. <laughs> and so it's one of those things where you know we really under, you know understood from a very early time that um, I could be a man and still be gentle and still be respectful and not have to live in my anger and be able to control that. Um, and so he showed me a form of manhood that I think, you know, you just don't learn a lot in the football, the football world. So, what impression, when you did get drafted by the Titans, what was your impression of Nashville almost 21 years ago now mm -hmm. when you came for rookie camps? Yeah, one of the things I really enjoyed about Nashville is that, you know, one of the things I fell in love with at Nebraska was that when I went there, people were nice. You know, they were kind. You know, I'm a guy, I was born in Chicago and visited there a lot because I have a lot of family in Chicago. Um, I lived in the St. Louis area. Um, and from the areas that I grew up at, people were standoffish. They weren't friendly. They weren't necessarily engaging. Um, and one thing I noticed at Nebraska was that people would talk to you. People would smile back to you on the street or wave at you when you waved, you know, wave back when you waved at them. And I think I felt that same kind of friendliness when I came to Nashville, that this is a really friendly city. Um, obviously, in any city you go to or anywhere you go, there's people that are more standoffish than others um, or more friendly than others. But I felt like generally, if I was walking down the street in Nashville and I waved at somebody, they'd wave back, you know, or I'd smile at somebody and they'd smile back. I'd, you could exchange pleasantries where... In a lot of big cities, you know, if you go to New York or Los Angeles or Chicago or, or downtown St. Louis, you're just not going to get that same vibe. You know, people are going to think you're weird if you're waving at them <laughs> and smiling at them. Uh, and so I fell in love with Nashville because it had that good southern charm uh, and that friendliness that I, that I really liked. I've got to ask this, being a Titans fan, what was it like to play with legends such as Eddie George... Kevin Dyson, Air McNair, and uh, Frank Wachek. Uh, it was it was pretty awesome. You know, I think um, I always I lament a little bit that I never really played you know the running back position very much of the Titans. That I mostly did special teams the time the time that I was there. Um, and so some people like might think, oh well, you know, you didn't really have the great. But I was like, you know, I was surrounded by some of the best football players I feel like to ever play the game. 
um, you know, um, they were some great guys on defense and on offense. And um, again, I got to see guys that worked together. I got to see what a really what a though they weren't champions at that time. Uh, they got really close. They were a championship team from the way that they worked together, uh, by the way they um, talked to one another, by the by the way they practiced, by the way they worked hard, um, by the way they worked in the off season, and. Um, you know, and so I think now that I look back, I don't look back at my Titans days and be like, oh, I'm so, you know, uh, I'm so proud of, you know, the kickoff returns and kickoffs that I was on. It was like, no, and I'm, I'm proud that I was surrounded by a bunch of superstars and I got to learn from them on a daily basis. I got to practice against them. You know, though I wasn't, you know, uh, one of the main running backs and, and running the ball on a regular basis, I was on the scout team. I got to play against, you know, Javon Curse. And Kevin <laughs> and Kevin Carter, and you know, and uh, you know, Samari Roll, and a lot of these star defensive uh, guys um, that I got to play with and compete with on a regular basis. So, and doing my research, once you exited playing in the NFL, you played in the AFL, the Arena Football League. Mm-hmm. What was uh, what was the culture like from, uh, or what was the culture shift from the NFL to the Arena League? Yeah, I always tell people the biggest difference is I mean, I, truthfully, I loved football more, or I liked it, or was happier playing football when I was playing in the AFL than I was in the NFL. Um, and part of that is the culture of the AFL at the time, especially it was a very exciting time for the AFL. Um, it was the kind of the golden years of the AFL where there was people, uh, there was interest, there was television coverage, um, NFL teams were invested. So that's been the reason why the Cats came was Bud Adams, um, who owned the Titans, also you know bought the Cats. So there's NFL ownership. You were really trying to make it a legitimate league. Um, you know they paid the, pl- the players fairly. Um, you know, there's health benefits and 401k and retirement, all this kind of stuff. It was a great job at the time, uh, but what was also great about it was it felt a little bit like college in that, you know, yeah. it wasn't as serious. You know, I, I feel like in the NFL, a lot of times because there's so much pr- pressure put on the guys, because there's so much happening that there's a lot of pressure constantly. You know, you feel this pressure you, of, of performing and not making the team look bad or or those kind of things, and you feel that in college, and you feel that in the AFL, um, but it was a different level. You know, it just it was a little bit more about like relationships and having fun than it was about performance and you know and about statistics. Um, and so I really enjoyed my teammates. You got to know your teammates on a better uh, at a better way, and part of that's because you know in the NFL everybody has so much money that you live apart you live you know the different guys living in different different parts of the town living some of the guys living in really big houses and and there's easy to kind of go off and do your own thing afterwards uh, whereas in the AFL um, where I said players were being paid fairly uh, but you know so much money where people wouldn't still eat together and spend time together guys were younger you know didn't necessarily have families so there's a lot more interaction after work um, than there would be. I got a lot of times I got guys to come with me and do um, I used to work with, work with an organization Frank Town Open Hearts one of my best friends that became through AFL uh, Ryan Roth would come with me you know um, I convinced a couple different guys to come with me and volunteer for different local charities like Youth Encouragement Services or Frank Town um, and be part of that life and so you really got to mix um, personal life with your kind of professional life uh, in AFL because you just it was a little bit closer um, it, it forced guys to be a little bit closer, have a little bit better relationships. You mentioned a couple of things leading into my last question, but what in the 11 years that you've not been playing football, what have you been doing? Um, so when I left, so uh, after Arena Football, so it said they had its golden years, and then the economy, uh, real estate, everything crashed in 2008, 2009. When they did that, they did shut down the league um, for a year, I think, in 2009, and then re- brought it back in 2010. In 2010, um, it went back to kind of pre-golden um, years pay, where they weren't paying very much. And so I tried one more year, uh, I played, um, but just... At that point, I had a full-time job. I was working for Frank Town Open Hearts. Um, I was still selling real estate a little bit on the side, uh, and I had, you know, I had 
had a couple, you know, I had my child, my children were growing up and I said, you know, this isn't really for me anymore. Uh, and so I moved it. So, um, out of that, I was an executive director, um, for four to five years, uh, with Franktown Open Hearts. Um, as my kids got older, I realized that I was spending a lot of time with other people's mm -hmm. kids <laughs> and a lot of nights and weekends with other people's kids. And I was like, I need to spend some time with my own kids um, on the nights and weekends. And so um, I went into more of a day job. So I switched into medical sales uh, and did that for four or five years, uh, working for a lab out of San Diego. So that was a job that allowed me to, while the kids were at school or in daycare, I, I worked and then I got home and I got to focus on my family uh, on the nights and weekends. Uh, so I did that for four or five years. Um, that that was a great job, but that company is based out of San Diego, and so a lot of times I had pressure to move. Uh, and I said, you know, I want to find a company that is that I can do what I'm doing now, but stay in the Nashville area if I get promoted. Like I want to move up. I'm a, I'm a, I'm aggressive and I'm ambitious enough that I want to get more money and I want to have more responsibilities and I want to grow in my career, but I don't want to leave Nashville because I loved it here. Uh, and so that led me to HCA. It's the largest healthcare company in the entire country, um, and it's based right here in Nashville. So I said, if any company can give me opportunities um, to, you know, have a great live, work, um, you know, environment, um, and have promotional opportunities, it would be HCA. And so I uh, started with HCA about four or five years ago, um, but working more sales uh, internally, uh, working uh, with procurement and working with other companies and commercial companies outside of HCA. Um, and I did like that, uh, but it wasn't like with medical sales when I was out on the road, driving around, meeting people, shaking hands, kissing babies, that kind of stuff. Um, I was more sitting, in a, sitting at a desk talking to some, some CEO across the country uh, via a video call and said, you know what, I really want to get back out on the road. And so um, just now in the last you know, five or six months, I switched more to back, back into a more of a medical sales role where now I represent HCA uh, to surrounding counties, uh, rural counties. Um, I get to work a lot with some great people um, down south of Tennessee, you know, out south of Tennessee. So I'm down in Pulaski and Murfreesboro and Manchester and um, Tullahoma, uh, Pulaski, Lawrenceburg. I have to go out to these rural communities um, and hopefully bring in the resources from the largest healthcare system in the country um, to help out, you know, rural communities. Um, and while I'm at it, I get to shake hands and kiss babies <laughs> and and, uh, and and feel like I'm making a difference. Sounds like it's the best of both worlds from the medical, uh, your first medical sales job and now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so it really is, it really is. It's I'm still getting acclimated, I'm still learning, uh, still trying to become a master at this kind of new environment I've been put back into, um, but I'm excited for the future, uh, and it gives me an opportunity, I think, to, like I said, ha fulfill my goals, not only professionally, but with my family um, and my personal goals. Thank you so much for coming on, Dan. This has been such a great opportunity to interview a former NFL player and get perspective from that end. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, no, thank you. It's great meeting you. It's great being on the show. I really appreciate it. Yes, sir. So, if you want to be kept up to date with any more guests, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Rowdy Riley SR. For more Rowdy Riley sports review content, click to subscribe.